day. We are so happy to be here. Uh, summer, it's just never ceases to amaze everyone that is at the track. So this is the finish, everybody. Welcome to the finish. Um, we'll head up to the starts later on today, but uh, the men's start has a lot of space, but the, the doubles and women's start doesn't have a ton of space. And it makes sense because they actually, because it's a homemade track, house gamax track, uh, they didn't put in the junior start until years later, so they didn't really plan to have a ton of space for cars and for athletes like some of the other venues around the world. So uh, so it's kind of fun. So we're going to be here at the finish. But I did, can we just turn around for a second? Let's just look at the scenery. Let's just look at how beautiful it is. I know we have our grandstand, but just you can see the mountains. We're just in this valley, and, like, I just – it's just one of the best views on the circuit. It really – Everybody, I, I was just talking to um, to the Tobies, Toby Wendell, Toby Arlt. They were just right here, and I was talking to Arlt, and I was like, how are you doing? And he was just like, he just points everywhere. And I feel like that's what everybody's been doing this week. I'm like, how, how's it going? And they're just pointing at the scenery. So, yeah, so we're happy to be here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the track and conditions and, and what's going on. Um, so the weather has been a little warm, which is great for our job because we love warm weather but it's not so great for the track um and what's been happening is is that it actually uh it hasn't been holding up as well and it's kind of funny because there's no refrigeration system here right the earth is the refrigeration system so the tobies were like the refrigeration system isn't working today which which i thought was a funny joke so but today we're starting early the doubles will get good ice which is great um the men later on in the day We'll have to see uh, what's happening uh, in terms of what ice conditions they're going to get. Um, but they actually moved the whole TV schedule forward about an hour so we could keep the ice good. So normally with other tracks, they have refrigeration systems where there's tubes and pipes running underneath everything that helps keep everything cold. But when you get the the privilege of racing in some ritz, we actually are just rolling with the elements. So. Uh, it's going to be super fun. Um, here's a good look at, do you see those track guys in those cool jackets? So those are the, the, the men of the year here in summer. It's, um, they are the ones that make this track. Um, they're not too keen on talking to people because you can imagine how floored everybody is when they come and how many people want to talk to them and interview them. So uh, when we tried to talk to them earlier this week, they were like, We've done so many interviews, so, uh, but they're cool. So there's like a young crew, there's an older crew, um, and some of the older guys have been here for 40 years. And then as I've been gathering information about this track is like each person will be in charge of a curve. Like they have like, okay, I have, well, they don't number their curves, but they'll be like, I have telephone curve. And that's the one that they're in charge of that they keep really nice. So as you see, as you watch the races throughout this weekend, you will see those guys in those cool ombre blue yellow jackets. And they are the ones that make all of this happen. I mean, look at like, even just this alone. So like normally at a finish, you'll have like a wood barricade or you'll have like a metal something, but like this, this is just a honk, honking piece of ice that I don't know how they put together, but it stays here all all winter and it's just like even as I'm looking at the track it's like so uniform and perfect and it's really just this incredible work of art it's this ice it's the biggest ice sculpture in the world that's what I heard this week so they're getting ready he's making this ice sculpture look all nice and pretty uh, team Austria is here they're hanging out um, China coach over here and so because there hasn't been a lot of space at the start they're actually warming up all in the parking lot over there and then they will get ready and then they will take the truck up to the top so today let me think about who we have racing today. We've starting with doubles. So last week we split up the doubles discipline. We did um, women's doubles and then we did men's doubles. But today they're back together. They are combined, uh, which is kind of nice. Everyone at the track kind of likes it uh, because it kind of makes everything efficient. Um, so we're headed into doubles first and then we're going to take a little break and then we'll do men's later on. So some of the interesting stories this week are that there's a few sleds that if they win, they will take the overall no matter what. So uh, Andy Futter and Marianne Oberhofer, if they win today, then there's no way that next week someone could beat them. So we might hand out uh, an overall title globe today, uh, which would be really cool. And it's the same for, I believe, Dominic Fischnaller, where if he wins today, then he will win the overall and it's done. So, And I know Felix Locke has been gunning for that top, but... 
Uh, so it could be interesting. We have a few, we have a few things that are uh, that are coming together. So, anyways, everyone's really excited to be here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to touch upon with you guys. But besides, we're just it's just beautiful and it's incredible. So I believe I have some commentators in the booth for me. Um, I think I was just talking to Bree Schaff before she 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 got in Natalie Mog which is a major win because Natalie is from here. Oh, this is her home track. Um, and there's not very many Swiss athletes. So to be able to, to talk, to call a race with a Swiss athlete on a Swiss track, I just think was really cool. And she'll have so much insight. So Bri and Natalie, how are you guys doing? Um, what are you guys feeling about this race? Hey Kate, thanks so much. So yes, I've got Natalie Mogg, the only home track athlete, well, home-ish, <laughs> with me here in the booth. Very fortunate for the first race here in St. Moritz. So, Natalie, we were just talking about the conditions outside and how it's so different this year driving up to St. Moritz and not seeing as much snow. Yeah, it's crazy because there is not much snow here, and I never saw this before, and this week is too much. It's too warm here. Outside, we had yesterday in training so much different ice because it gets slippery because it was just too warm. Yeah, so it, it's really interesting looking at the the sheen on the ice because normally St. Moritz is known for like being slower in the morning and you mm -hmm. want a late draw. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that's going to affect the race if it gets so warm? Do you think that that will continue to speed up the track or slow it down? I think uh, for the first round with doubles, it will be like the normal one. It will be slow at the beginning and getting s faster. Um, yeah, we will see how it will be after the second run because then it will be too, too warm, yeah. Yeah, so like the the risk of the morning races in St. Moritz has always been known that you want a later draw because mm -hmm. the sun comes up, it melts, it puts a little bit of that sheen, like yeah. a spritz on the mm -hmm. ice. So, you know, looking at our start list here yeah. with the doubles, you know, 16, that's about maybe 30 minutes. Do you think that we're going to see a difference in the first heats? Maybe, more? maybe. For the last two, three years, let's we will a little bit faster, and then we will see how it will go. Oh, and yeah. that helps our better athletes today, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. In every other track, you want to have to get an early start, but yeah. here it's different. Yeah. yeah, so as we continue through the day, and then even in the second heat, when it goes slowest to fastest, this track is the biggest disadvantage mm -hmm. for what was supposed to be a strategy to even out yeah. the race. Yeah, that's true. And we'll see, because the doubles are just sliding from one pole, it's not that right. long yeah. like from the top when you have the long straightaway, and yeah. Yeah, so to her point, Monty's Bolt is a, it's named after... Um, Monty's? Yes, Monty. Monty's Bolt. It's like uh, someone lost his uh, bolt. Oh, right. Yeah, and Monty's gave uh, to another competitioner uh, the bolt, and that's why they call it Monty's Bolt. That's right. It's a great story, and it goes to show how much camaraderie is here in St. Moritz. It is widely considered the birthplace of sliding sports. That is like bobsled and skeleton lore. Mm -hmm. Does Luge consider St. Moritz? Like, no, I think the FIA was founded in uh, Davos, also ah. in Switzerland, um, but the bobsleigh, it's born here in right. St. Moritz, yeah. Right, and so St. Moritz is the largest man-made snow slash ice sculpture in the world. It is a track that goes from, it's called the St. Moritz Celerina track because it goes from one town to the other. And is this currently, is this one of the fastest tracks? I think so, now? from the top, because from, yeah. we don't, a slide in uh, Vancouver from the top um, right. and from the men's side you get over 140 kilometers per hour. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. What was it like your first run here when you come out of Gunter Sachs? Yeah, I drive from Montes so it was yeah. very slow but uh, <laughs> last year uh, we drove from the men's start to the ladies yeah. um, and then we had 141 and then it was fast. But because the ice is so smooth, you don't feel the speed that yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, it is a surreal feeling when you can tell that you're going very fast, but it's so whisper quiet yeah. around you. Uh, once I slide with a bobsled down here, and it was much faster than in our sled. It was yeah. like the feeling was totally different because it was louder. Yeah. And I thought it would be faster than with the sled. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried skeleton here? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> never. And I think I'd never try skeleton. <laughs> it's, like, it's pretty easy here, yeah, especially for Monty's bolt. You can just yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's lay true. There. I think uh, to me, it's it's much easier because the sled goes with the track. Yeah. Um, 
So any predictions? So speaking of, we got a race today. Um, you know, we talked about how it's going to benefit the better athletes going later on. Did you notice anything in training? Are there any uh, sleeper hits, someone that might jump up in the mix here? Uh, it will be an interesting race because the doubles had so many troubles. Oh, I think yesterday, double troubles. <laughs> double trouble, yeah, because in the seated group, I just hear the speaker and it, oh, again, problem out of socks, again, problem out of socks. I yeah. think it's every sled. So it will be very interesting, and after one run, you can uh, say if it will stay yeah. after what, this one. Um, quickly, before we get our two-minute countdown here to actually start the race, what is it about sacks right now that is so difficult? I noticed that in training. It sucks is easier than last year, so I don't yeah. know why they have so much problems. <laughs> but with the socks, it's just like you don't have to let the sled go up because oh. when you're up, the wall pushes you down on the right side. So you have to go in very early and then have, hold him flat. Well, I hope the doubles luge athletes warming up right now were tuned into the studio show and then they can make adjustments now they know the secret to Kutra yeah. sacks and all of their problems well we just got our two minute warning so switch channels to the live race to join natalie mogg and myself brie Schaff for today's doubles men's and doubles women's races here in st moritz